This right here is a NAS, a networked attached storage device. For the last year, almost year and a half, I think, I've been using this for all my project management, files, photos, uh, archive, backups, all my storage needs have been running off this guy. This is the Synology DS1520 Plus uh, that I've been using but I actually was talking to the, the, the folks over at Synology and uh, they were talking to me about how I was using my NAS and stuff like that. And I mentioned that I was doing this video and they sent me the newer version of this NAS right here so I could review it properly. So I have the DS1522 Plus. So that way I could talk about the newest version. There's a few key differences there. So both of these NASs are five bays, meaning you could put five hard drives in them into a RAID configuration. And we'll cover what that means in just a second. So I have five 12 terabyte hard drives in these. And when you're building a NAS or a RAID, you need to make sure you have the proper drives for them. I want to put hardware recommendations for all the stuff that like I use and that if you want to build a NAS, you can check it out in the description below. Um, but I use 12 terabyte drives and five of those equals about 60 terabytes. Now, once you do the RAID configuration and factor in all the drive caches and stuff, it gave me about 42 terabytes of usable space, which seems way more than what most people would need. But after just about a year, I already have a quarter of that full. Now, for those that don't know what a RAID is, a RAID is basically a way you can take a bunch of drives and link them together so they act as one. And there's a bunch of different ways you can configure a RAID. You can configure it so that, you know, they just all act as one big drive. But the way I have it configured is I'm using the Synology RAID configuration so that one of the drives is a backup. So if one of those drives were to fail, I wouldn't lose all of my data. If you do something called RAID 0 and one drive fails, everything fails. You lose, you lose everything. So with this, you have a drive backup uh, because what RAID does is it doesn't just write a file to one of the drives. It does what's called striping. So it takes part of the file and writes it to one drive, another part of the file to another drive, the, the first part to another drive, and then another part to another drive. So that way the parts of the, your files are spread across the different drives. That way, if something were to fail, you wouldn't lose all of your data. A RAID drive is not fast at all. Like if I was just doing a backup straight to these drives, it would take forever. If I was backing up a big project or something, it, it would go on forever. So on Synologies, what's cool, and this one in particular, it's on the bottom, is there's these two slots on the bottom here. Now, what these slots are for is for NVMe drives. Now, if you're not familiar, NVMe drives are basically the next versions of SSDs. They're really fast storage chips. So you can put one or two in here. I have two two terabyte uh, NVMe drives in my NAS that's set up in my home right now. The reason why I have two of them is because they worked as a read and write cache. Now you can go with just one and it just works as a read cache, but to have that write cache so that when you're copying stuff over, it, instead of it copying straight to the RAID, it copies to these NVMe drives, which are super fast. So it copies that data there and then takes that data and then writes it to the RAID. Now, if you're also copying stuff off of the RAID, it will keep like data that you copy often or that data you access often on these caches as well. So you can access them super fast. Now, you're probably asking, why don't you just build a RAID out of the NVMe drives because they're super fast? They're also super expensive. Uh, I got the two terabyte ones and that was complete overkill. If I was going back and doing it now, I'd probably just do two 500 gig ones. The new one also has a 10 gig ethernet port. So I'm in the middle of upgrading my whole network equipment. Uh, I just upgraded my switch. So my switch now has 10 gigabit ethernet. I still need to do my routers and stuff like that. Uh, but the whole idea is to have my network on 10 gigabit ethernet throughout the house and the stuff that isn't on 10 gigabit ethernet to be on Wi-Fi 6E. So that way, if I'm on my MacBook Pro or on my iPad and I'm on Wi-Fi or if I'm plugged into a network cable, it will be able to access this NAS incredibly quickly. The goal is to be able to actually 
edit videos off the NAS. I had know a few other YouTubers that do that with a very similar setup. Uh, so that way you don't have to constantly keep buying computers with four terabytes of storage or eight terabytes of storage. Some of you are probably asking why use a NAS at all? Why not just get a big external hard drive? You can get external hard drives in really large capacities uh, and they cost a lot less. Like I, I will be completely honest, they absolutely cost a lot less. Well, like I mentioned, a NAS has a RAID. Uh, so you can bundle multiple drives together and make it a re really, really big. Like I did five 12 terabyte drives, but you can go even bigger than that. Or you could go smaller than that if you don't need that much space. And then if one of those drives fails, I can just pop it out. There's no drives in this one right now, but I could just pop it out, put a new drive in. You could know, put it back in here and it rebuilds the RAID for you. With an external drive, if that hard drive breaks, that data is gone. Like there are some services that might be able to recover some parts of the data and stuff like that, but they're not cheap and I wouldn't rely on them. So this is kind of like a, a safety net sort of like if, if my, so if one of these drives breaks, I can recover that stuff. Being able to recover data is really important to me because not only do I have my data on here, but I have client projects and stuff like that on here as well. Now you can get a RAID setup without being in a NAS. So a NAS just means it's attached to the network. It's network attached storage. Uh, there are uh, external hard drives that you can get that are in RAID configurations. Typically they're just two drives. So you have the drive that you write and work stuff off of and then the drive, it backs itself up to another drive. So if one drive fails, it falls back to the other one. But the reason why I wanted to do a NAS instead of one of those is one of those still acts like an external hard drive. So when you plug it into like a MacBook or something like that, you still have to eject it. Um, I just leave this on the network. It's on all the time when my MacBook is at home and on the Wi-Fi, it just is backing up constantly to it. I don't have to worry about making sure like, oh, is the Na is the RAID plugged in or something like that? Nope, it's just when I'm home, wherever I'm at, I could be working outside. I could be working in the living room, in the office, wherever, and I can always access this data. Now, you can use the Synology apps and stuff too to access this data outside of your home as well. I don't do that uh, just because I've never been in the need to like, oh, hey, I'm not at home and I really need to access this file. I've never really necessarily been in that situation. Uh, usually when I have like active projects, they, they stay on my computer. And then once I'm done working on those projects, that's when they get moved over here. For most people, cloud storage will be fine. But for me, the two terabyte cap a lot of services have, uh, it just doesn't work for me. And then if you go beyond two terabytes, a lot of them require you to pay per gigabyte and that gets expensive very quickly. Like I said, I, I already have about a quarter of this full of the usable space. So it's, it's almost 11 terabytes of data that I have full on my NAS already. So that would get really costly really fast. So accessing a NAS or any kind of server is really easy on the Mac and iPad. Uh, on the Mac, you just have Finder open and then hit Command K. It'll bring up the connect to server. You type in the server name. It'll ask for your username and password. You can have it remember that and you connect. On the iPhone or the iPad, you go into the Files app, select the menu button and then connect to server. Again, you enter the NAS name or the server name, enter your credentials, you can have it remember it if you want, and boom, Bob's your uncle, you're right there. So I have my NAS set up with two shared folders. The first is for Time Machine. Uh, Synology does a really great job. They have this article on how to walk you through setting up a Synology NAS for Time Machine backups. I will link it in the description below um, because there, there is a lot of detailed stuff that you need to do, so follow that guy but I use this for backing up my MacBook Pro. And what I did is I set up a storage quota. So it has a 15 terabyte storage quota. So 60 terabyte NAS, 42 terabytes of usable space, but Time Machines, the Time Machine shared folder is only allowed to take up to 15 terabytes. And I did that because Time Machine itself will just run until drives are full. Like it, it doesn't ever stop because Time Machine wants it to be its own drive. It doesn't want you to use it for anything else. Uh, so that way, that's why I set up two different shared folders and I created that quota. Normally I recommend 
people when setting up a backup system, just double the amount of storage your computer has. So my MacBook Pro is four terabytes. That would have been eight. But because I do a lot of these big video projects, I want to have a much longer uh, backup history. And in order to do that, you just give it more space. The other shared folder I use is archive. Now this is where I stash completed video projects, um, footage that I want to save that I might use in the future, raw photos, etc. This is an ever growing folder. Uh, I purposefully bought a ton of extra storage because I knew this is a folder that will just keep growing and growing and growing. Um, having a, all my B-roll saved from video projects has, has really saved me, but it takes up a ton of storage, especially like um, over the summer, uh, during the iPad OS beta when Apple pulled the external monitor support, well, I still needed footage of the iPad plugged into a monitor when I was talking about it so I could reference it and people would know what I'm talking about. I had that B-roll saved on this NAS and was able to pull that down. I didn't have to reshoot anything and I wouldn't have been able to reshoot anything because there was no external monitor support at that point. I also keep all of my raw photos for photography on here. Anytime I hit click, that photo ends up getting backed up here through a system we'll talk about in a second. Raw photos take up a ton of space, but and I'm a big believer in never deleting anything. Um, I've deleted stuff in the past that I thought I would never use again, and it's come back to bite me. So I've just come to the point where I, like, I will just buy a big storage accessory and just be able to save everything for as long as I could possibly need it. Especially raw photos, because that's the stuff like I go up in the mountains when I'm taking that or thumbnails for videos or whatever. I just like to save those because I might need them in the future or I might come back and like, I might have thought like something was a bad photo at a time and then like, nah, I'm not gonna edit this one. And then I might go back through and be like, oh, hey, you know what? This isn't actually that bad of a photo. I could fix these few mistakes here and there that I made. Uh, and that is something I have done. I've, I've recovered a lot of good photos that at the time when I was editing that photo from whatever trip it was, I just didn't think they were very good. Okay, so why do I need two NASs? Uh, Honestly, I don't need two NASs. I wanted two NASs. So the one here at home is the new one, the one that the guys from Synology sent me. It's 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 faster. Uh, it's got 10 gig ethernet. This is the one that I bought right here. Like I already showed you, it doesn't have any drives in it right now. Um, but I'm going to build this back up. I have drives already ready for it to go. And it's actually gonna go to my brother's house. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this for offsite backups. So my NAS is actually gonna back up to this NAS at my brother's house. So that way, if something happens to this place, like, you know, a, let's just say a fire happens and my house burns down, NAS is gone, my MacBook's gone, my iPad's gone, all that would be all my projects were gone, all my photos that I've taken would be gone, all my like client stuff would be gone. It would it would be very bad. So this would Taking my NAS and then backing it up to this NAS would save me. I would have to obviously go out and buy a new Mac and a new iPad, which would suck. That's what insurance is for though. But insurance can't give you back years of photos, years of client work, years of your own video work, stuff like that. And the nice thing is my brother, he so he's moving into a new place. It's not quite ready yet. I wanted to show you how that all would work, but the new place isn't ready, but it's gonna have fiber out there. So he's gonna have like gig up, gig down. I don't feel bad about eating his bandwidth because he has plenty of it. So there are some automations I use with my NAS. So first is Keyboard Maestro. Uh, and what Keyboard Maestro does is anytime I am on my home network, it sees that I'm either on the Wi-Fi network underscore Death Star Wi-Fi, or I'm plugged into my USB to Ethernet adapter. And what happens is when it sees that, it automatically runs a script that mounts the NAS's drives to my MacBook. Now, I actually had to go out and find a Wi-Fi plugin for Keyboard Maestro. I'll see if I can find it for the links in the description below. This is not something that is built into Keyboard Maestro, but basically what I did is I set it up so that it detects either the Wi-Fi network name or the USB Ethernet adapter's name, and if either one of those is plugged in, it then runs the script to do this. There is a simpler way to automatically mount your NASs. You could just add the NAS drives to your login items in Mac OS. The issue is if you 
have something like a MacBook and you go outside the house, when it can't mount those drives, it's going to throw an error at you. And it's just super annoying. So I wanted to avoid that error. So I just went ahead and did it this way. The other application I use is Hazel. And I use this to move files and back up certain folders. So in my video projects folder, I have a folder called underscore final projects. Once a video is finished, approved, set to go live, I copy the final file there and then Hazel automatically backs it up to my NAS whenever it's available. So if I'm not at home or if it's not on or if it's doing updates or something like that, I, I don't even have to worry about it. Like Hazel just handles putting it on the NAS automatically. The other thing it does is when I get back from a photography trip, like I just took a bunch of photos, I take the SD card and I dump them on my MacBook because it's a lot faster that way. And then what Hazel does is it looks at my photos folder, sees that there's new, new changes to that, there's new files, takes whatever folder structure I built and it merges it into the photos folder on my NAS. So essentially they're clones of each other. They should always be in sync. Uh, and this works really well at keeping these two folders in sync. Now that photos folder does get backed up with Time Machine, uh, but it's one of those things that I want the raw files also put on the NAS in the archive folder because sometimes I delete the raw files off my MacBook because again, raw files take up a ton of space. Like my camera, when I hit the shutter button, it's anywhere to 50 to 100 megabytes for just one photo. So that's kind of how I'm using my NAS, really for archival storage, backups, some automation stuff. If you're using a NAS or some kind of big storage unit, I wanna hear from you how you're using it, especially if you have some automations. Or if you're curious about getting one, let me know in the comments below. Like I said, I'll put links to like my hardware recommendations and the stuff I mentioned in the description below as well. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.